Hi, this is Mato. In this video, I will show you a very interesting chess game. This is the game between Max Juve and Alexander Kotov that was played in a Zurich candidate tournament in 1953. This is the game from round 1. Max Juve had white pieces and he started with d4. Kotov played knight to f6, c4, c5, d5, e6, and knight to c3. And we have Benoni defense. Pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn, d6, knight to f3, black decided to fianchetto bishop to g7, and white will fianchetto his bishop too. Bishop to g7, bishop to g2, both players are cast at kingside, a6 preparing b5. A4 was played to stop that. Knight from B to D7. Knight to D2. Knight maybe going to C4 or to B3. Rook to E8. A5. B5. Pawn takes pawn and passant. Knight takes on B6. Knight to B3. Queen to c7, knight to a5, knight would like to jump to c6, bishop to d7, h3, white is planning to play bishop to e3, and h3 stopping knight from jumping to g4 attacking bishop, bishop to b5, bishop to e3, Knight from f to d7. And black is okay. Queen to b3. What is this doing? Well, white is tempting black to win a pawn. For example, if bishop takes on c3, then queen takes bishop and black is winning pawn. But there is a problem with that dark square weaknesses around a black king threat is checkmate can be defended with f6 but uh, black didn't like that position so instead of taking knight knight to f6 was played rook from f to c1 lining rook with black queen Bishop to d7, queen to d1, white is preparing b4. It is black to move. And black decided to sacrifice the exchange. Rook takes bishop on e3. Pawn takes rook. Bishop to h6, attacking pawn. Queen to d3, rook to e8, king to h2, rook takes pawn on e3, attacking queen, queen takes pawn on a6. And now this is a very important part of the game. It is black to move. And black played rook to e5 that is discovering attack on the rook but there was another variation what would tal play in this position well i was thinking perhaps tal would attack he would attack pawn on g3 if bishop to f3 there is a very interesting continuation here, and that is knight takes on g3, king takes knight, queen to d8, queen is coming to g5. If, for example, rook to h1, then check, and after king to f2, 
queen to h4 check and black would have an attack on white king. That would be a very interesting continuation. In the game we have rook to e5, rook to f1, bishop to c8 attacking queen, queen to b5, bishop to d7 attacking queen again, but now knight to c6, king to g7, rook to a6 attacking knight, knight to c8, and now simple chess exchanging queens queen takes queen knight takes on b8 after queens are exchanged white is better bishop on d7 is under attack bishop to f5 rook to c6 attacking knight if knight goes to e7 then rook takes pawn so rook to e8 was played e4 attacking bishop bishop to d7 how would you continue first move that comes to mind is rook to c7 and this is not a bad move instead e5 hmm no time to take rook if bishop takes rook, then check and white is winning a piece. So after e5, black captured pawn on e5, but now knight takes bishop, defender of knight is removed. Knight takes knight, rook takes knight, black could have resigned here. Black continued rook to e3 rook to c6 attacking pawn on d6 knight to e5 attacking rook rook takes pawn rook to d3 rook to d1 rook to e3 rook to c6 and black resigned d pawn is rolling and let's go back to that interesting position at move 24. So rook to e5 was played. Knight to h5 was more interesting move. And for the end, a quote by Erika Young. If you don't risk anything, you risk even more. And that is all. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. I wish you good luck with your chess. And bye for now.